All right, it's filming. All right, so I've, I'm making all these little videos of things that happen on the farm. I've made a few how to carve a cow videos, and they always seem to go wrong. So I'll just we'll film this one. If it turns to shit, then we won't make it. But just in case it goes real smoothly. So this is like how to carve a cow, um, like if you're not a pet, <laughs> sort of thing. So here's a cow. Now this is a cow I've just bought. She's actually a bit skinny, and we knew that when we got them, but. Um, and she, this morning when I went to the paddock, she had um, this dangling out of her. And I wasn't really sure if she, I couldn't see any calf around her. She was sitting down, I didn't know if she had carved, and that's just some stuff, or whether she was carving. Um, and truth is, that was about four hours ago, so because you know, we've been milking and stuff. So, so anyway, she's still, we, during milking, Audrey and I uh, put our hands in her and felt the baby calf. So we will now. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, so if you don't have a whole a bunch of fan, you need some rope basically and some uh, bait and twine will do. Um, it is very good to have. This is probably the thing we really need is some of this, you know, slippery stuff. If you don't have this, then um, dishwashing liquid or olive oil or something. Um, so what I'm going to do, the first thing you've got to do pretty much, you've got to figure out, and this is probably the hardest thing, of which way it's coming. So. Try and work out whether you've got back feet or front feet coming. I mean, I can feel I've got two feet, and uh, but so and now I'm looking for a head. Okay, I've got two feet and a nose yeah. and a tongue, and can't tell it's alive or dead. I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to pull this tongue. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is we're going to pull it out. We're going to put some rope around its feet. Now I could just hold on to the feet and pull, but um, it would be way better to put a rope around the feet, and actually, and this is the big difference, and a rope around the head. Because if you can get a rope around one, you know, it's got to come out like this, basically, and not like this, but sort of feet extended and head like that. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a piece of rope around each of the feet, and I'll just use, I'll just use the baling twine, and I'm going to put the baling twine around the head and then through and I'm going to put a loop through its mouth okay that'll be boring so we'll actually just cut now okay so I've got I've got one rope around the head around behind the ears and through the mouth and then when you um, get on I've pulled one foot out if you're sort of struggling just get the foot right out and put a rope around it and then you can always let it go back in while you kind of work on the other foot which is you know actually I'm short of the rope now so okay so you Now this is all a little Come bit on. Mickey Mouse, but we've just we've got that. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, because if, uh, if you put on a video, it doesn't... Oh. Okay, well, that was kind of sad. I really wanted to have a video of a nice live yeah. car. Yeah. You know, <laughs> kind of huh? But, um... Actually, just... Oh, where was my... Right up. Close. I'll just sort of demonstrate how, though, you know, I got how I got the rope around the head. This is actually one of the key tricks. So you go in with a loop, and you sort of feed it, you know, you're going like this, and you're trying to push it like that, you forget about this end, and then when you get to here, you just you find the ear, and you kind of flick, 
Well, it would be better if it wasn't for two bits, right? So you get it like that. And then sometimes I just pull a little bit and they go here. And then I click it there so I know it's gone behind the ears. And then I bring my hand forward and I just find the knot. And then the, and I'm pulling with this hand until it... And that's still, and if the calf's alive, that's still totally fine. You know, like, that won't hurt it anyway as long as it comes out pretty quick. And it's amazing the difference of pulling with the three things because a lot of the times when you're trying to carve a cow is what a lot of farmers do they see two feet and they pull like crazy on the two feet but the head kind of goes like this or like that or even like that mm. so when you pull all together then it comes out good makes sense I think it makes sense okay cut just the other thing too something to remember if you sort of if you're trying to figure it out if you think about it, if you feel you put your hand and you feel feet the thing is if you you go in and you feel feet where the, the soles are pointing upwards and then and then you, you feel this. Now this could be a front foot. You might think it's a front foot upside down. But when you go in and then you feel up and you feel this joint, you know, oh, this is a back foot. I mean, generally speaking, they're coming up backwards. The, two, the soles of the feet are pointing up. Whereas obviously, if you look at the front feet, when it comes out that way, you know, you've got the soles of the feet pointing down. Um, and the two first, this joint and that joint, both bend the same way. Whereas you see this one, you know, that joint. Now you could sort of think this was a front foot too. If you were, say you felt this, you know, you think, if the calf was say lying on its back coming out that way, ooh, two front feet and start pulling. But when you go in, instead of feeling the, the kind of knee, you've got this, the hock, you know, which bends a, a, a different direction. So that's a good little thing to remember. Okay, cut. And actually one more thing, we're going to drag this calf just into the paddock with that cow so she can lick it and hopefully that will stimulate oxytocin to be released from her brain which will let the milk down but also will help um, expel the afterbirth because she's still got her placenta still inside her like that so we actually want that to come out. Now the possibility is that um, it won't come out but she's buggering off now so video going. Alright, All right, now this is actually going to be super embarrassing. Uh, and I, I was actually tempted not to bloody video this because uh, this is a broken like rule number 101 of uh, when you're learning to be a vet which is um, when you've done a calving always before you leave the farm put your hand in the calf cow to make sure that it's not having twins well guess what the one I just we just videoed just a minute ago we put it back out in that paddock went home and uh, well luckily she's just one of the backpackers said I've just come over and there's a cow calving and blow me down she's having a second calf um, so, you can see she's got um, two legs and a head out, and so really she should pass that cow, that calf, no problems, you know, like actually, she's only been doing it for like 10 minutes, and she's in a good position. And she's got the second leg on there. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we could, you sort of got two options right now, obviously you just wait, you know, that would be the natural thing, or you could pull it, and really if you're... If you're say if you just I always like, I'm sort of like to teach you know the whole point of this is to teach like you know guys on farms you know just imagine you're just a, you're a farm worker you're on your own the boss has gone to town you're faced with this situation so one possibility is you just you know just watch her and make sure that she's making progress you know now um, from what I can understand I think she's making progress because yeah. you know even just since you came back to tell me yeah she's um, oh just filmed the ten from now spectators. Right, this rough match. <laughs> and the camera girl. <laughs> I just, it's always nice. <laughs> it's, I just, uh, all right, but let's just say I had to do this. I'm on my own. I don't have a whole bunch of fancy gear. I just got some bailing time. It's pretty good always to have a rope. So what I would do is I would prepare myself. And I said before that, you know, it's good to pull from the head. But now I would probably just whip in there, get a rope around one of those feet. Um... And if I have, if I could catch that on here, and then let's just say, then I have this long rope attached to it, even if she gets up, I mean, obviously I should, you know, but let's just say she's in a paddock, you know, so you don't, you haven't got the option of running into the shed. So I, this is what I would do, you know, I'd tie it, because Matt was asking before, well, I don't want to hurt her, but now, you know, the quicker you pull the calf out, kind of the better. And certainly if that calf was alive, and it's obviously dead. So what I would do is I'd rip, she's obviously could just get up, so what I'd try and do is I'd sneak in, I'd get this loop around just one of those legs. If she gets up, I'd pretty much could just tie this end of the rope to a post or something and she'd pull on it, or I could pull on myself. So just let's see what happens. So she's actually not going to get up. 
So then the next thing is when you pull, is you want to pull kind of like out, back and down. So it's always important to get the angle right. So, so the way she's sitting now, I want to pull from about here. So actually that put, you know, and I could just, I mean, I don't know how hard this is going to be, but you know, the rope makes it. Do you like a hand mic? No, no, I'll just sort of see. Just general traction and then allow her. It's already past one cast today, so she. There we go. Alright, that's the shoulder through. Now it's going to come. Oh, it's sad. There you go. So, what would cause it to. Is it suffocation? What's that? Yeah, we'll see the umbilical cord. Oh, that actually just ripped then. Yeah, I guess it was just too long, you know, and that's kind of um, my bad a little bit. Like, you know, I saw her this morning, you know, at eight o'clock, and it's like five hours ago. Yeah. And, um, you know, I should have actually brought her straight up to shed and carved it then. So I sort of feel a bit stink about that. Um, yeah. All right. Now the interesting thing is now whether she'll pass that placenta. Where's the and other car? Twins, now that's a girl, um, a heifer. And the interesting thing to always talk about, you know, if you have twins, there's a big consideration. If the if it's a twin, a boy and a girl, I don't know, do you know about that? Um, yeah, I think if it's a boy and a girl, the boy can have kids. That's right, it's actually the girl. Oh, but I yeah, you got the right idea, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So if it's a twins, wow. and you get a boy and a girl, and, and cows, um, the girl will be infertile, probably most, sure. yeah, almost definitely. You know, it's called a free martin. And what you find is they don't have a uterus because the testosterone from the boy circulates through the female calf embryo and stops her developing That's a womb. Crazy. So, hmm. Well, we learned a bit today, even uh, it was a sort of bad result. Okay. We'll uh, cut now. Oh, actually, well, as a matter of interest, we've just come over. There's our cow over there. And. Um, Here's the, who was the other calf, and look at that, it was a boy, this is a little purse, so yeah, that the female cat, calf there would have actually been infertile, most likely. Um, oh, actually I'll leave this bit of failing time because you can use that to drag it away. Oh no, we'll probably chuck it in the trailer. Okay. Like, you know when the questions that get asked? Yeah. Good. No, not now. <laughs> no, not <good> no, <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? What was your question? Sorry? <laughs> oh, I was asking what we were feeding her. Okay, now she's right. I don't. I was going to dodge that question. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's palm. I'm still filming. Yeah, it's palm kernel. Okay, so palm kernel, <laughs> camera, is evil stuff produced from the crushing of palm nuts or something that makes palm oil, which is in Nutella and lots of other things. And so the bad thing about it is that, of course, you know they're cutting down rainforests and orangutan habitat to um, make it. And I guess ideally we wouldn't actually use palm, palm kernel, but actually just right now we're short of grass and palm, coil, palm kernel is like the most efficient and they love it and it's cheap. Um, so I'm kind of like in that situation, well, I don't want my cows, I want them to be healthy and light and she needs building up, you know, so it's a good, it's a good thing for her. And apparently Fonterra say that they get their palm oil from completely sustainable palm forests because it's a little, in my opinion, it's a little bit like saying to New Zealand, well, we're not going to buy your milk because you cut down all the kauri trees, you know, 100 years ago. I mean, when you go to Kuala Lumpur, like, there's just palms everywhere, you know, and obviously, um, you know, they, they replace rubber trees. Yeah. So, you know, if we stop buying it, it's not like they're going to suddenly, like, not do it anymore. It's a tricky one, you know, but, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just don't have any qualms, really, with buying. But the truth is, actually, I, we're, our plan is to get a well we don't have to do it in the future but at a certain time of the year you need it okay yeah we have some more questions coming from the audience now uh well first of all Rafa made a very good <laughs> <laughs> question which yeah. now i feel very okay you can now film me uh, oh, i film you okay, okay. Yeah, I, i'm filming that bit now yeah yeah all right so Rafa asked me can they have tri triplets which i mean yes actually yeah they can have triplets you know cows it has happened especially i mean obviously lamb sheep have triplets all the time cows is pretty rare so then of course Rafa said well should we actually check that she hasn't having triplets?
which is kind of slightly <laughs> embarrassing because the yeah, Yogi's for <laughs> Just in case. So, whenever you pull a calf out of a cow, and you just want to check that it has twins or triplets, only really just got to... Okay, no triplets. <laughs> no calves. Okay. Good point. Now, and then Tamara had another question. What's your question? I was asking if cows grieve over the loss of their baby. Yes, I think they do. Yeah. Because, and that's actually why I, I think it's quite... If, if What I like to do, I don't know if anyone else does this, but like I just like to leave her with the dead calf. You know, so first of all, so she actually... She gets, um, you know, I like to think that she'll work out that it's dead. And, and I've seen that, you know, eventually she will walk away and, mm. you know, not always have the rest of her life worrying whatever happened to that calf that was born in 2020. Mm. Um, and, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, and of course it's nice. I think I said earlier on, you weren't here, that, you know, it's also very good that the cow licks the baby. Like, so the other one, she licked it. And that kind of is sort of part of the whole, that's how they get their scent. And then that stimulates milk let down and also other um, uterine contractions so that will help to make your afterbirth come out the placenta mm. and actually oh nice good one over there actually rough just cut oh gosh show this look at this placenta well, where is it on the field yes, over here. sort of a bit um that um because that's one of these cows that I've just bought and the guy was pretty uh, much desperate to get rid of them because they were uh, I see what you're saying. Yes, you know, like it's like Okay. Oh, are you filming now? Yep. Oh, okay. Actually, just wanted to point this out. So here is a, a normal afterbirth. So that's the placenta of a cow that's plopped out after she gave birth. And I was just going to show these are the cotyledons. See those things there? That's... That's, I mean, this is the placenta, right? And that circular thing there, see it's kind of, it was bloody, that connects to the inside of the uterus, you know, these sort of like little fingers that join together like that. And then that's how the blood supply from the mother goes through that joint and then goes into the calf, you know, and then when, and then when the calf is born, and then that is then joined to the umbilical cord. So all of those things are all, you know, eventually connected into one sort of artery which then goes into the It's like the, the Matrix. Cup. It is like the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was going to say, oh yeah, so then the calf is born, so it falls out and it rips the umbilical cord away. And then, you know, uh, uh, soon after this should flop out. And these things just sort of separate and then come apart, which is that thing about oxytocin helps that to happen. And, um, yeah, that's about all. Uh, okay. And you can see if that sticks inside, you know, the, all this stuff has to rot out, which is, you know, I've got another video somewhere of a cow, you know, with retained membranes. And I've seen some of them eat, eat that? Oh, yeah, and then, yeah, some cows, most cows will eat it. It's healthy to eat them. What's that? Like yeah, well, there is a thought that it contains kind of goodness, yeah. plus, we were told at one stage, that also it destroys the evidence for um, wolves or, you know, uh -huh. predators, you know, when uh, there's okay, this stinky yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, sure. They smell it and like, oh, it's a newborn baby here. Yeah. Because, you know, Mother eats this, destroys the evidence, then buggers off somewhere so that sure. uh, you know, her baby, she wants to protect her baby. Right. <laughs> uh, <Rafa>. Yep. <laughs> Ask uh, Tamara's question. Uh, oh. Why was the milk yellow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ask Tamara. Tamara, oh, what, what was the question, Tamara? <laughs> why was the milk coming out of her udders yellow? Okay, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so what happened was just we were just here now and the cow was licking the calf and then she started dribbling really yellowy milk. And then Tamara asked, good question, oh, the milk looks real yellow. And that yellow milk is called... Called... 20 points. Who wants to be a millionaire? Called... It's called Col either um, banana shake, um, <laughs> mango, or colostrum. Colostrum, yeah. Right, yes, okay. All right, so that colostrum, and colostrum is like the, all mammals, the very first milk that they make is called colostrum, and that is really um, full of antibodies. Yeah, antibodies, <laughs> you know, <laughs> antibodies. <laughs> um, not antibiotics, yeah. yeah. It's antibodies, which is sort of like all the mothers, all the sort of protection that she's built up over her lifetime, she passes to her calf through her colostrum. Yeah. It's only sort of temporary, but it protects the baby for the first, you know, three or four months until it builds up its own immunity. Yeah. So if you have a calf, which doesn't suck get colostrum they 
uh, bad normally die or get real sick you know mm. soon after so it's a or, or un, not very healthy so yeah always newborn babies should get colostrum within the first 12 hours yeah and um, also if you say that the mother normally eats the um is it the uterus oh, yeah yeah uh, the placenta then why is this one still here yeah well that mother didn't I don't know ah why. okay so it just sometimes happens that yeah, they sometimes is it maybe because she was still birthing she still had another cow to get out no that's because that's from in the summer yeah, yeah it's from oh, another cow so Oh, with this thing about colostrum, yeah. they don't actually have to have their own mother's colostrum. So oh, you yeah. can feed it, say an orphan calf, you could feed it the colostrum from another cow. Um, and also, colostrum is still the very best for babies anyway, for the first quite a long time. So it's a pretty good habit to save all your colostrum and feed it to your young calves. Because it's really superfood sort of thing. Yeah. In fact, some people eat colostrum because it's a superfood. So, okay, <laughs> yep. we'll go. We're locked